Hello and welcome to my Home Espresso Masterclass. The goal of this series is simple. I want to help you improve your coffee at home. The series will include 14 episodes and take you from the fundamentals of pulling your first shot through to some advanced espresso knowledge and a little bit of latte art. On your first watch, I recommend running through in order. After this, feel free to reference the particular episode you're having trouble with again. And you can also reach out to me in the comments or via my Instagram account if you need help. If you're in Australia and you're watching this because you joined my coffee subscription, then welcome. Your coffee should arrive in the next few days and the first episode should give you some basic knowledge to help you dial in when your coffee arrives. Now each episode should be around five minutes in length so you can watch the episode before you make your coffee each morning and hopefully stack your skills as we go along. We're going to pull some shots in the next episode but before we dive into that, I'm going to hit you with some fundamental tips. I'm excited to help you take your coffee at home to the next level. Let's jump in. Firstly, if you can buy fresh coffee and grind it just before you brew, this will take you a long way towards making great coffee at home. Prior to roasting, green coffee is fairly stable. I always buy current crop coffee, meaning it was grown in the last year. From here, I'm looking at the subscription orders going through in the next week and only roasting enough coffee to cover these orders. When it comes to brewing your espresso, you wanna use coffee which has had a chance to rest and degas, and then use it within a month of roasting to get the best flavors out of it. The coffee roasting process brings about a lot of chemical changes in the bean, and for the first week, it's releasing CO2. From days seven to 30, assuming you keep your coffee dialed in, you will get all the nuanced flavors listed on the bag in your cup. After a month, it'll still taste like coffee, but it will potentially taste a bit more dull and lifeless in comparison. If you were to buy coffee at the supermarket, even the freshest specialty coffee will probably be past its prime. And the coffee from the bigger roasters will probably have a best before one to two years after roasting. Thankfully, if you're on the subscription, you won't have to worry about any of this. You'll receive coffee that's been roasted recently and depending on where you are in Australia, it should be arriving just as it's finished degassing and ready to brew. Now in terms of storage, if you have fresh coffee and you believe you'll use it within a month of roasting, just keep it in the bag it came with with the one-way valve and keep it in the cupboard. The freezer is actually a pretty good long-term solution for storing your coffee, but only if it's in an airtight container or bag, and only if you let it come back to temperature before opening it up and exposing it to oxygen. Now, if you don't let it get back to room temperature, you'll get moisture on the beans, which will be worse for the coffee than just letting it age normally at room temperature. Grinding fresh will also improve your coffee dramatically. Once the coffee's ground, there is way more surface area compared to whole beans. This means that the coffee will oxidize and the flavor will reduce very quickly. Now in the beginning of your journey, it might make sense to buy pre-ground coffee, but if you can get yourself a grinder, it will take your coffee at home to a whole new level. For making espresso, it's also important to be able to adjust the grind size to really dial in your coffee and get the most out of it. So if you buy pre-ground coffee, you're kind of stuck with an approximate grind size rather than something that's perfectly dialed in. Now lastly, the more consistent you can be with your brewing recipe, the easier it will be for you to get consistently great coffee at home. In the specialty coffee industry, a lot of people like to brew with scales so that they can accurately weigh how much coffee they're using and even weigh the amount of espresso out. Because an espresso extraction is very quick compared to other ways of brewing coffee, small changes in the recipe can have quite a big impact on the cup of coffee. Now you might not want to brew with scales when you're making your morning coffee. So in this series, I'm going to teach you how to brew with and without scales. But you should just know that switching to brewing with scales has probably had one of the biggest impacts on coffee quality in the last five to 10 years. And if you're going to buy high quality beans, this extra step in your workflow will help you brew the best out of them. So now you have some fundamental knowledge about coffee. And in the next episode, we're going to get on the equipment and pull our first shot of espresso. I'll be using my rocket espresso machine for this series, but it's important for you to know that all of the info you learn is transferable to most espresso equipment. I've taught this information to people who have basic gear like brevels or sunbeams through to people who have spent five grand plus on their gear. So in the comments, let me know what you're keen to learn most. And after that, I'll see you in the next episode. Keep frothing.